Pastor spoke about my uh, prophetic ministry, and one thing about prophets is, uh, you know, they're, they're moved a lot by inspiration. That's part of the package is the inspiration. So uh, Pastor asked me earlier, uh, yesterday I think it was, what are you going to preach on? And I said, justification. And all of that disappeared when I came into this room. That message just <laughs> disappeared. I'd already given the the folks on the graphics, some scriptures, so I'm going to change all that, and we're going to follow the Holy Ghost. Does that sound like a good idea? Praise God. And uh, uh, if you can put it into the character generator, whatever you call it right now, let's go to Mark chapter 5, verse 25. We'll read six verses of scripture. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands out here and receive me as... Your prophet tonight, praise God, hallelujah, put a demand on the gift. Father, I thank you I didn't call myself, you called me. I haven't sent myself, you've sent me. I did not anoint myself, you've anointed me. I haven't equipped myself, you've equipped me. But I'm here to do my very best to obey you and be a blessing to these, your people. And I will be the first one to give you all the glory for it in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I love your pastors. As they said, we go back a long time, and I've, uh, of course, I love the Brunel family, Pastor Adam and Jesse and Sarah and, and all the family, extended family, and the staff getting to know some people, making new friends, and uh, I cannot tell you how happy I am to be in Jubilee and to be part of the team. So just thank you so much for the, the, the kind words that I've received, and uh, many people have approached me and said some nice things to welcome me, and that means a lot to me. All right, did we get that scripture up there? Let's throw it up there if, uh, if we have it. Mark 5. I may have thrown a monkey wrench in the whole deal tonight by changing my sermon. <laughs> Is it up there? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. There we go. Okay. It's easier to read it off of this. Uh, no, 25. 525. Just 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. 525. There we go. Uh, and we'll go through this fast. A certain woman which had an issue of blood, she was hemorrhaging for 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians. Anybody ever been there? Spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. Next verse. When she had heard about Jesus, she came in the press. That's a big crowd. Of course, you know that. And touched his garment. Next verse. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, that means immediately, instantly, the fountain of her blood was dried up after 12 years of hemorrhaging, 12 years of being sick, 12 years of being weak, 12 years of being ceremoniously unclean and an outcast in society. She was felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Everybody say felt. Praise God. I'm going to pause right here and say something about that, and then we'll continue uh, reading the scripture. Uh, she felt something when she touched Jesus' garment. She felt something. She felt something. Uh, we who teach faith and teach people how, how to walk in faith have really overemphasized something to the point where people are afraid to admit they feel anything. We tell them, you know, faith doesn't have a feeling, and we don't go by feelings, and, and that is true. Faith does not have a feeling. But healing has a feeling. And when your faith manifests as a healing, it feels good to feel good. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, it's okay to admit you feel good when you feel good. <laughs> Whatever he said, right? Yeah, I know. Okay. She felt in her body that she was healed. She felt something. When she touched Jesus, she felt something. What did she feel? Next scripture. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue, dunamis, had gone out of him, turned about in the press and asked, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging thee, and you say, who touched me? I was in, uh, having a crusade in Mumbai, India years ago, and it was the only crusade that I had that kind of got away from me a little bit. 
Uh, and the reason, it was a good reason. It was a big, big crowd in a uh, soccer stadium, and I had a platform that was taller than I am, and it was really constructed. It's a big wooden structure, and it had wood siding on it. No curtains or anything. It was really solid. And I'm up on the platform, and every, every night, people were pushing in, trying to get to the front. They were trying to get from the back of the soccer field all the way up to the front because God was doing miracles. It was great. And I was telling the crowd, calm down, calm down. We're going to pray for everybody. We're going to stay here and bless you. We're not leaving. I said, if I have to stay all night long, I'll be here. And uh, I talked to my crusade manager, and I said, Bob, uh, we're having a little bit of problem with crowd control. I said, I want you to go to the store, buy some posts and some ropes, and get a little crew to help you, and let's make a little rope barricade across the front here, give us some buffer space. Sounded like a good idea. It's so interesting. Uh, that night, people are right up against the ropes, you know, so to speak, and, and it's coming to the time when we're going to start praying. And people, In fact, I was praying for people, and there were some miracles happening, and people were pushing and pushing. You know, that little woman with the issue of blood was desperate to get to Jesus. She was in the back of the crowd. She's wanted to be up in the front where Jesus is. So I had a situation like that going on, and uh, people were, you know, when you have tens of thousands of people pushing, there's a surge, and... You can't resist that. I mean, it's just impossible to push back against thousands of people. And I looked down, and there was a, a little mother with an infant in her arms being pushed under the rope, and the rope was under the chin of the infant baby. And she's screaming, my baby, my baby, and no one is paying attention, but I can see the crises there. So I jumped off the platform. And I grabbed a hold of the rope, and I grabbed a hold of her, and I lifted the rope, and I pulled her out. And as soon as I was on the ground, everybody rushed towards me. And I mean, the crowd was pressing me against the platform. They're about to love me to death, you know. I'm just, I'm like this, and, and big crowd of people. And uh, I wasn't so afraid for my own safety, but, you know, for the safety of people. You know what could happen if a crowd stampedes. And so uh, my, my team got a, above me on the platform and reached down, and I lifted up my hands, and they lifted me on that platform. Praise God, you know, all 250-some-odd pounds of me <laughs> lifted me up. And my crusade manager is a cool guy, a little Gujarati Indian guy, really bold. And he said, uh, it's over, it's over. Get out of here. And I went, yeah, 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 I got to get out of here. And so uh, we jumped off the back of the platform, ran around the wall of the stadium, and tried to stay out of sight for a while. We're going towards this little, I don't know what it was, alley or something, you know, where people feed in and out of the stadium. And someone screamed, there he goes, there he goes. And so hundreds of people started chasing me. <laughs> they wanted to get a touch from heaven, you know. And, and Stephen Rattoad with his little legs outran me. <laughs> and he went out in the street. And he's, it's, man, it's late at night. It's like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And he jumps in front of a cab. And the cab skids to a stop. There's a passenger in the cab. Stephen opens the back door, grabs the passenger, ejects him. <laughs> pushes me in there, slams the door, and he slaps the cab driver on the back of the head and, and said, get out of here. And the cab driver looks and he sees all these people coming and he steps on it and we peel out. Man, what a night. This, he couldn't speak any English. I couldn't speak any Hindi. He's freaked out. It's a special night, kind of like carnival, called Holly. And people get drunk, and, you know, there's a lot of problems during Holly. And they build bonfires in the middle of the road. And this guy's lost, and he's driving around, and I'm trying to get him to go to my hotel. And the only thing he could say was, they're coming, they're coming. I said, they're not coming. They're coming. So uh, I finally flagged down another cab. Do you speak English? Yes. All right, find out how much I owe this guy, and you take me to my hotel. I got in at midnight. I, don't, I mean, it's kind of a long story, but I want you to have a picture in your mind of what a press is. It's insurmountable. I mean, it is really a big thing when you use the word press. And what's interesting about this little lady is that she went through that press and touched the hymns of Jesus Christ. Garment, praise God. And the instant she touched the hem of his garment, you know this story, she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague and the fountain of her blood dried up instantly, just like that. 
And then Jesus, knowing that virtue of dunamis had left his body, turned around and asked, who touched me? Now, let me, let me talk to you a little bit about the anointing. What most people do not understand about the power of God is that the anointing is an actual, tangible, heavenly material. It's not an idea. It's not mind over matter. It's not the power of positive thinking. There's nothing wrong with being positive. It's not good vibrations. The power of God is the anointing is an actual substance. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, and he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Praise God. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a thick ungent. It's a sticky substance. It's an oil-like substance, oily substance. It's heavenly. It's a heavenly materiality. It was on Jesus. It got off of Jesus, and it got onto the woman. It went into her blood, and it cured her from the inside out. Praise God. Hallelujah. The human body was designed by God to accommodate the anointing. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You have a skeletal system, a nervous system, a cardiovascular system, uh, a lymph system. Uh, we have all these systems within our body for, to transport hormones and blood and what have you. There's another system that science has not identified, but it's in every human being, and that is the ability to transport the anointing. God designed Adam, God designed man to operate in the anointing. The anointing supercharges our bodies. The anointing changes us from Clark Kent into Superman. Hallelujah. If the spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he will quicken, energize, make alive your mortal body. Praise God. Hallelujah. God wants to put something in you tonight that's going to make you younger and stronger and faster and healthier. Praise the Lord. It's medicine. It's real. It's powerful. It's not superstition. It's not mumbo jumbo. It is an actual substance. Jesus spit on people and got them healed. How many word people here? I can show you three places in the Bible where Jesus spit on people to get them healed. Why don't we have spitting services? <laughs> I know people who've written books and had an entire teaching series on fewer scriptures. I think I'll come out with a new book, Holy Spit. <laughs> if I accidentally spray you tonight, don't wipe it off, wipe it in. Rub it in, hallelujah. <laughs> you people in the front row are gonna get healed one way or another. Praise the Lord. <laughs> There's power here tonight. Explosive peas. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think about that fellow that, that uh, well, Jesus, you know, prayed for the man that was blind from his mother's birth, and he took him outside of town and, and spit on his fingers and touched his eyes and asked him, what do you see? He said, I see men as trees walking. Pretty good, but not good enough. And so Jesus did something that a lot of preachers preach against. He prayed for the guy a second time or anointed, anointed him a second time. And he said, now what do you see? And he said, could see clearly. Well, that tells us something. It tells you if a little bit of the anointing will do you a little bit of good, a lot of the anointing will do you a lot of good. Praise God. It's accumulative. It reaches a, a saturation point. I see people that have struggle a little bit on receiving the anointing. They don't know exactly how to do it. There's a scripture that I think gives us a little insight. Isaiah prophesied of the coming Messiah, and he said he will grow up before God as a tender plant out of dry ground. Tender plant out of dry ground. The world that Jesus came into was spiritually dry. There had not been an open vision and prophecy for 400 years. And there wasn't a place like Jubilee you could go to and get prayed for and blessed. But Jesus fellowshiped with his father and he was able to receive the anointing and operating in the, in the anointing even in dry circumstances. I want you to think about that for a moment. Really, the onus is upon you and me to receive the anointing. God has already released it and poured it out. Amen? And so we need to learn how to receive the anointing. It is a substance. It can be transferred. Jesus transferred it through saliva. He transferred it through his garment. God 
wrought special miracles from the hands of Paul so that from his body were taken handkerchiefs and aprons, delivered to the sick. They were healed of their diseases and evil spirits left them from a handkerchief. In other words, the anointing got out of Jesus' bloodstream through the pores of his skin into his clothes. The same thing happened to Paul. He would wear aprons and pieces of cloth attached to his body while he's preaching and the anointing that was inside of him would percolate out and be absorbed by these cloths then they would take a piece of cloth and send it to a loved one in another village another place and when they received the cloth they were healed and evil spirits left them that's not superstition it tells us that the anointing is tangible and it's transportable it is transferable Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, getting back to the tender plant, um, you probably took physical science class. I did. I, I remembered one thing they taught. Osmosis, diffusion, and capillary attraction. That's how plants receive nutrition. Osmosis, transfusion, and capillary attraction. A plant doesn't have a nervous system. A plant is not conscious. A plant's alive, but it's not a thinking life form. And yet a little plant has the ability to direct the growth of its roots towards moisture. If there's moisture in the ground, the plant, without the benefit of a brain, will seek out that moisture and go deeper or even go to the side. You know, trees that are planted near rivers, their roots are angled towards the river. You and I need to be like plants. We're the planting of the Lord, right? And how do plants receive their life giving nutrition? They absorb it. They absorb it. See, the the nutrients are in the water, and those nutrient-laden waters are transferred through the rhizomes. There will be a test on this afterwards, which are the little part of the roots, and that nutrition is absorbed through the skin of the roots into the plant, and then it's transported throughout the plant. You are like that plant. You have the ability to receive the anointing through the pores of your skin. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know if that excites you, but that excites me a lot. Praise the Lord. Imagine Jesus touching you and something comes out of him and gets inside of you. A lot of times we kind of, we, we, we focus on the information. I'm giving you some information tonight, but there's an experience in God too. There's an experience that we should have. Not just all theory, but practical provable, repeatable principles where we can experience God. How many of you would like to experience more of God? Amen. How, how many of you would like to be more full of God? Do you have all the anointing you want right now or would you like some more? If a little bit of it will do you a little bit of good, what would a lot of it do? Praise God. If getting anointed just ever so often throughout the year is beneficial, what if you, what if you had a continuous application of the anointing in your life. I believe every time you come to church, the anointing gets on you and gets in you. I believe every time you're around Holy Ghost people, the anointing gets on you and in you. I believe that when hands are laid on you, the anointing gets on you and gets in you. Praise God. And it's just going to grow and grow and grow until it reaches a, a threshold. Praise God. Your body knows how to receive the anointing without you thinking about it. In fact, if we're not careful, our thinking will interfere with us receiving the anointing. We don't get the anointing through our head. We get it through our body. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The woman felt she was healed. Jesus knew that dunamis, power, had left his body. You see, they were aware of it. I'm always aware when the anointing leaves my body. I can, go, I can close my eyes and go down a row of people and I know which ones are receiving it because I sense... I'm aware, I know when the anointing leaves me, it's training, it's experience. Jesus knew that the anointing had gone from him into her. On the other hand, there are people you can pray for them, pray for them, pray for them. Everybody else is getting blessed, everybody else is getting a a miracle and it's like laying a hand on a watermelon. (laughs) They're just not getting it some way. 
That's why I like to take a few minutes and talk about how to receive the anointing. Imagine a sponge. What would you do if you wanted to wipe off a counter that had a spill? You'd wring the sponge out. You'd empty the sponge. And then by osmosis, the sponge would fill up with water. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to just bring yourself out, if you will. And then when the anointing of God comes in your life, I want you to just get charged up with it as fully as you can. Praise the Lord. Now, I'll prove to you that you don't have to have a brain to get the anointing. Elisha was dead. And he had an open sepulcher and his bones, bleached bones were there. And here's a group of Moabites, pagan worshipers. And they have a dead comrade and they're about to bury this guy, give him a decent Moabite burial, whatever that might be, something weird, I'm sure. And uh, they spy a band of men. Now they don't, you know, friend or foe, they don't know, they don't have time to give this guy a burial. So they see the open sepulcher of Elisha and they threw the man's dead body into that grave. And when his body was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood upon his feet. Wow! Did he think himself alive? No. Did he have a brain to analyze, you know, what it's all about? No. Did the Moabites pray the prayer of faith for him? No. Did Elisha pray the prayer of faith for him? He was dead. But there was an anointing in those bones. Hallelujah. There was a residue in those bones. There was a heavenly materiality. There was a substance that was still in those bones. And when that man's dead body touched the bones of Elisha without any outside agent, just the contact, that anointing rushed out of those bones and went into that body because the anointing is seeking a body to be in. The anointing wants to be inside of your body. I mean, it's almost automatic. If we could, if people had a little switch here on the back of their head, kind of like a reset on a computer, I would flip that thing, pray for them, and then turn it back on. <laughs> Just to get their brains out of the way. Because nine times out of ten, they're going to overthink it and overanalyze it. No, this is real simple. The laying on of hands is a fundamental doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ. These signs shall follow them that believe. They, you, will lay your hands on the sick, and they, the sick, will recover. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jubilee people ought to be praying for people all over this valley. And, and not just necessarily praying for them. I'm always, just with strangers, shaking their hands. How you doing? Praise God. My name's Huggins. Stand up. I give hugs. I hug strangers. You know, just let that anointing go into them. Praise God. Hallelujah. You're a good receiver. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet. What most people do not understand about the power of God, the anointing, is that it's an actual, tangible, heavenly materiality, a substance. It was in Jesus. God anointed him. And he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. The anointing will get rid of oppression. It'll get rid of depression. It'll get rid of sickness. It'll energize you. It'll quicken your body. It'll make you smarter. It'll raise your IQ. And it'll make you prettier too. Hallelujah. Thank God for the anointing. The word Christ means the anointed one, Jesus, the anointed one, Jesus Christ. We call ourselves Christians. We're declaring we are the anointed ones. When you say I'm a Christian, you are really making a declaration. I am anointed with the same anointing that Jesus had. Jesus Christ and his anointing are on the inside of me. And when I lay my hands on people, that anointing gets out of me and gets into them. Hallelujah. Praise God. We need to spread some sloppy agape around. We need to bless people and touch them and, and hold them and hug them and, 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 and make contact with them. Holy, holy contact with people. A holy touch, a loving touch, a healing touch. Lift your hands and worship him. The anointing's in this room. The anointing's in me. The anointing's in you. The anointing empowers us to do things that in the natural we can't do. The anointing makes us stronger, quicker, 
gives us divine ability. The anointing removes burdens, destroys yokes, and sets captives free. The anointing can, is the agent of change that will produce a breakthrough in your life. I tell people often, this is sort of how the apostle and the bishop work. The apostle and the pastor, I beg your pardon, the prophet and the pastor, the prophet and the bishop. I have a breakthrough anointing. Believe the prophets and so you shall prosper. That word is break out. The anointing will help you break out. My prophetic anointing will help you break through, but your pastors will help you stay through. You need to be taught, but you also need to be changed. Amen. Tonight is a night of change. Come on, wave your hands towards the Lord. Change our hearts, God. Change our circumstances. Change our situation. Release your power inside of us to change us. Rearrange us. Take us apart and put us back together right. Do it for us here tonight. There are people here, Father, who desperately need change and they're trying to find the strength with their own, within their own mind and their own will. But your anointing is the agent of change. You're here to change our bodies from sick to well. Our minds from confused to clear. Our emotions from turmoil to peace. You're here to change our homes and our business environment, to change our economics. You're here to change us. Father, I thank you for your anointing. I declare that I am anointed. And when I lay hands on people in obedience to your word, the anointing flows, it's automatic. It's not capricious. It doesn't ebb. It always flows, and it's flowing here tonight. While you're standing in an attitude of prayer, I want to minister to one special person, and then we're going to minister to more. Uh, here's a word of knowledge. I want you to respond very quickly. Uh, shin splints or splints in your leg. Uh, I, I, I've never had them. I'm not sure exactly what they are. I think it's probably from impact or something like that, but there's someone here who's suffering from shin splints. Did I say that right, shin splints? And I want you to come right here as quickly as you can, shin splints. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a long night. We can do this the easy way or the hard way. Easy way, you come down here, the hard way, I close the doors and interview everyone and nobody gets home until I find the one with the shin splints. <laughs> shin splints. I want to minister to you first. Um, shin splints. Raise your hand and wave it at me if you... I'm, I don't know if you're having a, 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 you know, a flare-up right now, but if that's something that you've dealt with, then go ahead and raise your hand. You say, well, I'm believing God. You know, I'm believing God for my healing. Come on up here, sister. Well, I'm the answer to your prayer. Your faith is working. God sent me here to lay hands on you and get you healed. Hi. What's your name? Huh? Yorenzi. Say it again. Yorenzi. That's a Yorenzi with a Z. That's a pretty name. So you have pain in your leg. Is it painful now or is it just comes and goes? Okay, I'm going to pray for your body, Yorenzi. And I want to pray also for you to have a very special blessing in your life because I know by the Spirit of God that there's something you want more than even being healed. It has to do with family. It has to do with people. It has to do with the knowledge of God that you want desperately for your loved ones to have. So I'm going to lay my hands on you. Stretch your hands out towards you, Renzi. And Father, we pray right now that as we in obedience to the Bible, lay her hands upon her that she, like a little green plant, yeah, 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 <laughs> will just receive it. You're like a little tender plant. 
growing in the ground. The anointing is upon you. You have found. <laughs> it's moving through you now. Releasing power. Ah, healing. Transformation. In Jesus' name. Now, I don't have to ask people, you know, did you receive something? Did you? I do oftentimes. And your answer, you may be seated. God bless you. Because I know when the anointing flows. I mean, as soon as I put my hand on her, I sensed it flowing. Sometimes I'll keep my hands on people a little longer because I'm aware that God's doing something and I don't want to short circuit it. But here's what we're going to do tonight. I want everyone to take the hand of someone even across the aisle. So you're going to have to adjust your where you're sitting a little bit. We're going to make a human chain here. I want everybody to link up with someone, even across the aisles. You figure it out. If you got an extra arm, touch somebody else. And I want us to have a, a physical chain here where we're all linked up hand to hand and heart to heart. And right here is where we're going to start. And I'm going to put my hands on you and the anointing is going to go into you and through you, down this hand, into this man, into this woman, into you and you, and the anointing is just going to start going through this body of believers here tonight. And it's going to go all through the building. These signs shall follow them that believe. Are you a believer? They'll lay hands. They will lay hands. They will lay hands. I don't have a lock on this thing. If you're a believer, you can lay hands. And you're laying hands on someone right now. Hallelujah. I'm going to put my hands on you. And it's going to start flowing and growing in Jesus' name. Ha! Yes, 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 yes. Let it flow through your body to the one on your left and your right. Let it flow, let it grow, and let be an agent of life. Let it flow from man to woman, sister to brother, parent to child. Let it flow on everyone here tonight. Let the anointing flow, let it grow. Let that culture of heaven grow on the inside of us tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. The onus is on you to receive. The onus is on you to soak it up, to absorb it, to put a demand on it. Pull, pull. That little woman with the issue of blood put a demand on Jesus. She was pulling at it. She wasn't passive. She was actively pulling. Yeah, pull it out of your brother. Pull it out of your sister. Pull it out of Jesus' heart. <laughs> pull it out. Faith works by love. Pull it out. Receive it, believe it, and you will achieve it. It's in you right now. It's the anointing. It's real power from the front of the room to the back of the auditorium, from the left to the right. Everyone is anointed here tonight. <laughs> now then, let go of your neighbor's hand and lift your hands up and start worshiping Jesus right now. Praise God, hallelujah. Come on, let's offer up a praise to Jesus. Jesus, the anointed one. Jesus, the anointed one. Jesus, the anointed one. Now, you may be seated. I'm going to leave you one little thought before we go. You may be seated. I'm going to leave you with a thought. You know, the Bible says faith without works is dead. Another way to say that is faith always requires an action. And the interesting thing about the anointing is that if you want to keep it, you've got to give it away. The more you give, the more you get, the more you get, the more you have, the more you have, you can, the more you can give, and it's dynamic. Now, I'm gonna make a confession here tonight. I pray for a lot of people. I lay hands on a lot of people. 
And it's not all altruistic. It's not just because I'm a nice giving person. I am a nice giving person, but I have an ulterior motive. Because the more I give, the more I get. Hallelujah. Pray one for another that ye might be filled. Hallelujah. The more you give, the more you get. The more you get, the more you have. The more you have, the more you can give again. And this will start growing. Once it starts flowing, it will start growing. So look for people to bless. Pray for one another that ye might be healed. Weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who who rejoice. I'm going to pray one more prayer and uh, bless you. Father, I pray that you seal us all with the Holy Spirit that the royal seal of the Holy Spirit would be upon our vessel and this treasure that we have will be protected and preserved And as we leave here tonight, we're not going to leave the anointing behind. We're going to take it with us. And it's going to be there tomorrow. It's going to be there Friday and Saturday and all day Sunday. And we pray that you seal us with the Holy Spirit tonight so that our vessels can contain and preserve this anointing because it's precious and it's holy and it's special. And we don't take it for granted in Jesus' name. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. We'd be remiss if we did not ask one more question. Is everything good between you and God? Do you know God? Are you walking with God? Do you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ? The only way to come to God is through Jesus. And I'm going to ask you, if you need to improve your relationship with God, to begin a relationship with God through Jesus, tonight is the best night you'll ever have, the best opportunity you'll ever have, because today is the day of salvation. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed, nobody's looking around but me, and you say, Brother Larry, I need to have a relationship with Jesus. I need to have a better relationship with Jesus. May I see your hand? If that's you, we want to pray for you and bless you. God bless you, young lady. God bless you, young man. God bless you, young lady, and you, and you, sir, and you, sir, and you, and you, and you. Oh, this is so much fun. And you, hallelujah, I see hands all over the place. And you, okay, okay, all right. I want you to look up here at me. I want you who had your hands raised to say this prayer with me aloud. Repeat it after me. Mean in your heart. I want everyone else to say the same prayer. Let's encourage them and pray this together. All right? Say, Heavenly Father, I want a relationship with you through Jesus. Jesus, I'm giving myself to you. I believe in you. I receive you, you're mine, I'm yours, and I do have a relationship with God in you. Thank you for receiving me, for changing me, and being with me forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. That's exciting stuff.